uh, aware of the time, but parents, we see that there's uh, about 23 of you, 16 actually attending right now, and hopefully a few more people will come in. But welcome to our uh, Parent Information Night for incoming kindergarten students. My name is Patrice Liff, I'm the interim principal, and I'd like to take a minute uh, to introduce you to our amazing staff. Um, and if I say your name, just raise your hand and give a wave. Uh, let's start with Sue Donnelly. Sue's uh, been teaching for a few years with us and she's a full-time kindergarten teacher this year. Uh, and next is Deb Murphy, our other full-time kindergarten teacher and who's been teaching full-time kindergarten as long as I think full-time kindergarten has, has been around in Atkinson. Um, our newest staff member to our kindergarten family is Susan McCauley. Um, Susan may be new to our kindergarten family, but she is not new to education. And we're thrilled to have her uh, on staff with us working with some of our youngest learners. Um, I'd also like to introduce our nurse, Laura Dollop. Um, she's here to, uh, if you have questions um, that we don't answer during a presentation that are medical in nature, feel free to ask them, Laura's here to answer them. And last but certainly not least is our wonderful school counselor, Mrs. Barbara Gallant, um, who will talk a little bit tonight about um, social emotional learning needs of young children. Before I go to my other, I, um, a message from the district. Um, and as a public announcement, this parent information night is being held on Zoom and is being recorded. And this will be posted on our website tomorrow. So parents who weren't able to attend tonight can watch it and, and learn about our kindergarten program. Um, and the last piece I'd like to tell you is at the end of our presentation, there will be a question and answer time. Um, you can use the raise your hands function, um, which you should see at the bottom of your Zoom screen, or you can also see um, another little icon called Q&A. And if you want to type a question in there, we will get to all of those. And Dean's gonna help us navigate that so we don't miss any of your important questions. So we'll start our presentation. I'm gonna share my screen with you uh, right here. And there we go. Welcome to the kindergarten night. Oh dear, now it's maybe not gonna work. Here it goes. There we go. We already introduced ourselves. And um, we're gonna start by talking about, throughout this presentation, you're going to learn about the day in the life of a kindergartner. Um, the kindergarten students in the full day program participate in specials. Um, those are physical education, music, library, art, and technology. And those will be our specials for next year. Um, the half day program gets a little flavor of these specials, but not as in depth as the full day program receives. Hi, I'm Barbara. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about the school counseling program at the school and about, um, you know, some services that are available and what I can help you with. Um, so, so we talk about social emotional learning with students um, and they're not ready to be really learn unless they're really in a good place. So we try to do that with our whole team here. Um, we want students to recognize and respond to emotional cues and others. So if somebody's sad, we want them to respond appropriately. And we work on that throughout the year. Um, the teachers do a fantastic job every day. Um, we want students to be able to learn new things and try new things. Um, that's what's exciting about coming to kindergarten. We also would like students to seek help when they need it, when they recognize that they need it. And sometimes kids need help learning how to do that. So we help with that. Also, we, we want students to be able to follow um, directions, um, rules, and, and routines on a daily basis. So they will learn those kind of things with us. Also, we want kids to be able to transition from one activity to another. And, um, and we wanted to do it smooth, as smooth as possible. And sometimes 
we all know that our kids don't move as quickly as we want them to and back and forth, so we're patient with that. We also want kids to learn how to take care of their own things um, and um, respect you know, the, the Chromebooks that they might use and the materials and books in their room. So we want kids to be able to do that. And then we want students um, to be able to be away from their parent or caretaker um, guardians for you know extended period of time. Full day is a long, you know, it's a long day. We want kids to be able to do that. Um, and so we'll help through that process. Okay, on to Laura. Are you moving us, Patrice? Did you see it move? Now yeah. I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is my third year at Atkinson. I was at the middle school for five years prior. Um, in order for your child to be able to attend kindergarten, um, I need a copy of their updated immunizations and a current physical. So it would have to be from September of 2020 or after. Um, and also if you could let me know of any medical conditions that might affect them during the school day and um, any medications they might need during the school day. It could be a daily medication that's needed, or it could be an EpiPen or an inhaler or a seizure medication. And then um, any medical changes that occur during the school year, if you could contact me and let me know um, so we can help your student the best we can. Um, and to contact me, you would just go to the school directory on the Atkinson Academy website and my email and my phone extension is there. Deb, Deb, you're muted. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so I get to talk about the growing readers and writers, and it's one of the most exciting and magical year for kindergartners because I think they continuously wow themselves with the things that they can do. Um, so what encompasses reading and writing is the um, phonemic awareness where we play with the rhyming and the letters and the sounds and mixing them up and the phonics and the word study. Um, we do lots of interactive read alouds. We have daily guided reading lessons with small groups. We do lots of writing. We have independent reading where they have a book bags of um, books just at their level, which is wonderful because as we know, kids all come in at different levels and they excel at different levels. So their independent book bag has books that are just right for them. And we talk a lot about that. We have shared reading and reading mini lessons. Hi, um, I get to talk about math, which I love. I love math. Um, what, we ex what we do for math, of course, we start off introducing numbers counting. Um, we want them to know numbers one through 10. We start with that. We want them to have a solid foundation on the numbers one through 10. Um, but we do teach numbers all the way up. They count to 100. We, we do the teen numbers as well. Um, solving, we do addition and subtraction. Make sure that they know um, addition and subtraction. And more important than getting the right answers in math, we, we spend a lot of time, time on um, having them explain their thinking. It becomes very important as they move along in math. So we start very early having them explain how they get the numbers, how they get their answers. For number sense, we do more or less, one more, one less. Um, decomposing numbers like 19 is 10 plus nine more ways we can, different ways we can make all the numbers one through 10. We do measurements, um, comparing objects, um, all the vocabulary, height, length, capacity. Um, data, we focus on graphing, sorting things into like categories, talk about positional words. Um, in geometry, we do um, geometry, we do 2D and 3D shapes, um, their attributes of them, comparing shapes. Um, and it's a lot of hands-on, math's very hands-on and we make sure it's that way. And um, that's it. All right, I'm Sue, Susan. Um, I'm gonna be talking about science and social studies. Uh, we do a lot of integrated science and social studies. There are many units that we teach. 
every week, which I absolutely love. And um, together we collaborate and we work as a team, which I also absolutely love um, as well. And um, some of the topics for science that, um, that we really um, uh, teach the kids is about weather, push and pulls, um, pushes and pulls, needs of plants and needs of animals. And um, again, like what Sue was saying, it is a lot of hands-on learning and we try and make it fun um, and interactive as much as possible. Um, you know, especially this year, um, it's not as interactive, but we tried our hardest to make it really interactive for the kid. Um, social studies, um, some of the um, units that we, or in the topics that we uh, teach are about family, self and others, and community. Um, we, in September, we really talk about um, self and others, family and community, and what it's like to be part of the Athens community. Um, so um, we really try to incorporate it in, um, with what the kids are experiencing at that time. So, um, it's pretty exciting and it's a lot of fun. Okay, I'm, I'm back. And um, we're gonna do talk about car drop off and car pickup. One of the things that we really strive is to have safety first. We want kids in their, in their um, safety seat um, or we try to be as patient as possible, be aware that there are other people dropping kids off and, you know, and picking kids up. So. Sometimes it can be delayed if the kids aren't able to get in and out of their um, seats themselves. Um, one of the things that we want kids to know is their own name and last name, because um, we will um, we radio from where your car is and we, we pull the kids out from another area, depending on whether it's snowing or raining or um, too cold. So it's good if kids recognize their own name and their own cars sometimes. Um, so we encourage that this, you know, the summer and even now start to um, um, show your child how to get in and out of the seatbelt independently when the car is stopped and when it's a safe time. Um, and be patient. The first few weeks we're, we're gonna, we'll get to know all the kids, we'll get to know the cars, we'll get to know parents. So be patient and, um, and we adjusted um, how we do car drop off and pick up this year. And we gave everybody a, um, a placard with, name, with the student's name on it and the grade. And that's what we'll call in and recognize. So we want kids to be able to recognize that. And um, we'll get used to recognize everybody and which kid goes in which car. It, it works out really well, but we're, we're really safe about it too. And um, so the, the dashboard is where you'll put them and you'll get to all those instructions in the fall. You don't have to remember everything tonight. But the biggest thing about car drop off and pick up that I think is really important for parents to know is that school begins at 8.30 and it begins at 12.30 in, for afternoon kindergarten. You need to be prompt. Kids are in and starting work at, you know, starting their day, doing morning meeting, doing Pledge of Allegiance, at 8 30 so we get in there and we get started and it really helps the child adjust to school if we're right there on time it, it just helps everybody um if you have questions i'll be glad to answer those later next one about the bus okay kids love to ride the bus it's a safe way to ride the bus um, generally, the kids are assigned in assigned seating on the bus. The bus drivers are, are amazing in that they get to know the kids um, very quickly and where they, you know, you know what their what the kids' needs um, are. If we have a normal open house in the fall, we will have a bus where kids can practice getting on and off. They're adorable. We will help the backpack go up along with the child because that big that first step can be really tough sometimes. Um, but talk to your child about riding the bus safely. They have to sit in their seat. There's like five major rules about riding the bus that we'll, we'll go over and the bus driver will go over. But sitting down um, on the bus is the most important. 
um, pre-K and kindergarten students are seated in the, at the front of the bus. Um, that's where the bus driver wants them so we can see them. The seats on a bus now are really tall. Um, so it's hard to see the littles. So we, um, so the bus driver wants them as close to them as possible. And um, hopefully that we have a normal open house and we can get some kids on the bus and they can really get that experience. It's one of the most exciting things. I still remember taking my own son to that particular night when they get on the bus. So. Okay, Mrs. Lip, I think you're next. Yes, I am. So I know a lot of you have been phoning the school and asking Sandy McKay, when is screening? Are you having screening this year? And the answer is yes, we are going to have a screening. We are still um, developing what that screening will look like because it will need to be different this year in order to follow COVID protocols. However, we're confident we can have a screening. Um, the ladies that you see on this call with me will all be involved in the screening. And um, you will receive more information about that as we go on. And to date, we know that it will be in May, but we do not have a date yet for that. Um, what we focus on in screening, basically, it, it really does help us to build our equitable classrooms. And, you know, we want to have the same or similar number of boys, a similar number of girls across all classrooms. Sometimes it's hard to do because if you request AMK, you just go into AMK. The same with PMK. But for our full day classes, we really do try to take a look at how many girls are in each, how many boys are in each, um, you know, academic, social, and emotional needs. We take a peek at fine motor. Your child might be asked to cut something with scissors or to draw a shape. Um, your child might hear a story. Your child might do some fun math problems. Um, so maybe work with clay or Play-Doh. So these are all things that we've done in the past. Um, so the other part of the screening is it's really your job, um, which is a very important job. And that's the questionnaires that you will be receiving. What I do know this year is you will be receiving them via a Google form to complete. Um, and that is because of, of COVID. I think it's also a great way to use Google form and use technology. Um, but you will complete the forms that will automatically be submitted to the office. And then when you come to screening, um, the, the form, let me explain, the forms will be just a general information form about your student, like information you'd like us to know. Um, but there's also um, a little bit of a historical medical form that you will be asked to fill out. Um, when you come to the screening and your child is upstairs in the kindergarten room uh, playing, because that's really what they do when they come to screening, um, you, you may talk to me, you may talk to Barbara, or you may talk to Laura. The three of us will be downstairs, probably outside. Um, it's going to be May and it's going to be really nice outside. So we're thinking that that will work. Um, and we might have a little bit of a conversation, especially if, if you indicate that you'd like to talk more about a medical condition or a concern you have, a social and emotional concern. Um, or if you just want to chat a little bit more to get to know us, that's what we will be doing while your child is, is going through the screening. Okay, so preparing your child for kindergarten, that's the big question. Um, so first of all, relax. Kindergartners come into school and knowing all different things. So both emotionally, socially, academically, there's all levels that enter kindergarten. And fortunately, all three of us have our own kids, have all sent our own kids off to kindergarten. So we're very comfortable with it all. Um, but important things you can do with your, your children is read, read to your children as much as possible. Get them to have the love for reading, watching you read, watching you um, read to them how exciting books can be. That's very important. We want the kids to love reading and love school. 
I mean, it's their first year. That's most important. I always say is to have them love school, love being and love coming to school. Other things that we can do to help is um, teach them to recognize what's theirs. Uh, year after year, we'll have lost beautiful ski gloves in our classrooms and we'll hold them up and nobody will claim them. So we ask, try to label your stuff, try to have them recognize their stuff. It's important because things get lost. Um, other things you can do is play games with them. Um, board games are great. They love board games. Um, I'm telling you, I brought out the old fashioned trouble this year at the beginning of the year and they absolutely loved it. It's like none of them had played it. I was like, nobody played trouble, come on. But um, board games, you'll um, go fish, any, any games, you know, do letter recognition games, number recognition games. You know, practice colors, do sorting, anything you can do like that. Um, practice using scissors, give them the pens and the pencils to just draw on paper, you know, write what they think is words, what they think is numbers and letters, you know, give them the opportunity to do those things. Um, and then probably another important one is the um, self-care, making sure that they can do things independently for themselves for themselves, you know, not only getting dressed with the zippers and the buttons and the toilet screen, but maybe even, you know, when it's snack time at home, have them open their own juice box or have them open their own snacks. Um, those things are really important. The more independent they can become, um, giving them that little bit of independence um, goes a long way when they enter um, kindergarten. But I promise you, they'll all be fine. I think, um, Deb, you're up. So we, we know they'll be fine. So <laughs> um, if you're not fine, these are the places and um, websites that you can contact. The homeschool connection is so important, as you all know. When we know what's going on, if you want to tell us when your child has a bad day, I'm always for that when we get to phone and email. First, you can go to the Atkinson Academy website. If you go um, click under parents, um, there'll be quick links and there'll be all sorts of things to a lot of these things that you'll see. You can also get to that same information um, by going to the Timberland Regional School District website. Um, feel free to phone and email. Usually for me, I can't speak to the others, but emails are probably the quickest and easiest way. I know as a parent of three that not all of our mornings went as blissful as I had imagined they would when I would have kids and I would sit and be distraught all day about it wasn't a perfect bus you know run to the bus so feel free to call us and say or email and just say how they doing the morning you know didn't go well if we can ease your stress and make the rest of your day fine it's worth that few minutes you know just to reply to you we have parent teacher conferences in November um, and as needed. So if you feel you need to have one other than our, you know, district wide one in November, you can contact us and we would be happy to schedule such an appointment. Um, PTA has a Facebook page that I believe Patrice is going to um, add to the chat or something. Our PTA and our night owls are two great um, organizations that we have, and we're so fortunate. Um, our PTA and Night Owls do so, so much for the staff and students at our school. Um, we also have school messenger and power school announcements that you will get. So make sure when it comes time to fill out those forms, you have the most recent um, phone numbers and text numbers and emails. Um, so you can get the information as quickly as possible and we can get it to the right device. Um, you will get Power School account numbers and login information. We also have some um, something called the Pickup Patrol. If this is your first child coming to kindergarten, that is how you go online and you um, make us aware of different dismissal procedures in most cases, or sometimes if your child's going to be late. Um, so you do that online and that also, you can find that under the parent section. I would also ask and advise that um, you have to do that. You can't just send the teacher an email. It has to be through the office so we can keep track of 
every student and child, but it's a nice heads up for the teacher if you want to send us that in the morning so we can get them packed up and ready a few minutes early or just um, put some extra work in their folder if need be. Um, my school box is um, their lunch account, which you can also find under the parent portal. It's where you can find the menus for school, the prices, and you can add money to their accounts. Um, the first few weeks, a lot of kids like want to try getting lunch, nervous, and we will help them and, you know, go down either us, the teachers, Sue, Sue and I, or our paraprofessional assistants who are amazing. We'll help them every day. And if they want to try milk today, or if you think that you've had a conversation and they're ready to try hot lunch, just send us an email or not, but we will help them. Even if it's mid-year, I had a boy that just was excited to get a hot lunch for the first time this mm -hmm. week. Um, and we also have Google Classroom and the Google Classroom, um, we'll see how we use it. We used it a lot last spring and we've used it a lot this year. We'll see how we'll be using it going forward next year. But if we have remote instruction day, that's where you will find announcements from the classroom teacher, maybe some of the specialists, the classwork uploaded with directions and links. Um, so I would advise some of these things that, you know, if you have time over the summer that you go in and you play around and look at this um, information and how to get to and from. Um, I know that in the fall, when we start school, that um, Janice Sikori and Sandy McKay, who are excellent and we couldn't survive without them, our staff in the office, get inundated with calls. So the sooner you look around and figure out the questions, the better they might get answered. All right. All right. Um, Deb uh, just uh, briefly touched upon the PTA and the night owls and all the great things that they do, not only for the staff, but the whole school and, um, you know, for the children. Um, some of the um, wonderful things that they have done um, our monthly meetings, they have. Uh, they have speakers at these monthly meetings. Um, they have the ice cream social event, which has been very successful in uh, past years. And um, I believe that the ice cream social event was a fundraiser, which um, raises a lot of money for the school. And they've had um, lip syncs for, it, for the fourth and fifth grades and the second and third grades, the fall festival, which I hear is so much fun, various holiday events. They do have fundraisers throughout the school year, uh, which obviously raises money um, for the school, for programs in the school, uh, for various things that the, you know, the school might need at the time volunteer times at school and home and staff appreciation. Um, this year, uh, the PTA and the Night Owls, they have just been so wonderful to the staff and they've been so appreciative this year and they've done so many wonderful things and they've done so many wonderful things for uh, the children this year um, at the school um, and, and trying to do activities that promote social distancing. So, um, you know, uh, even though we have not experienced any of these things, uh, some of these things this year, we're hoping uh, to get back to, um, you know, some of these events, you know, come September, 2021. So Sue just mentioned, um, the PTA meeting. Yep. And when we're done with this presentation, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a link in the notes for you. It's a link to tomorrow night's PTA meeting. All parents in the school have been invited to attend. It's a Zoom meeting. Uh, but the PTA has really looked at a lot of ways of, you know, not only you know, being tremendously supportive to staff and students this year, but to connect with families. And we haven't had the opportunity to do any of that uh, because we still can't meet. We've been meeting over Zoom every month, but you are invited to meet 
with the PTA tomorrow. So I'll make sure to add that to um, the notes at the end when we get out of the uh, presentation or answering your questions. I also want to talk just a little bit about InfoSnap for the original, uh, the initial registration. There's a link on the website to InfoSnap. Um, it'll say register your child for school. You just link on it. It takes you right to InfoSnap. Um, that is where you will put any of your contact information if you want to receive and you do want to receive power alerts. So power alerts are sent by the school in uh, if, if school is closed for some reason. Um, but this year, because we have not been able to send our um, shuttle home with information for parents. Every Friday we send a shuttle home. Um, we've had to rely on power alerts to communicate with families. So you want to make sure to complete that piece in the info snap. So it will ask you for a, a lot of information. That information is, you know, your work phone number, your home phone number, um, what your name is, how many children are in your family. Um, and then that all gets uploaded into PowerSchool. And in order to get your PowerSchool account, I believe you have to call the office to do that. And that's what Deb was referring to when she said Sandy and Janice are very busy at the beginning of the year. So as soon as your child is registered, I would call the office and say, can I get a PowerSchool account um, and get it as soon as possible? Um, when you, after you register, and mostly people bring this in during the screening days, but you can certainly drop it off at any time that's convenient for you. Um, but we need a copy of a residency form, which could be just a copy of your mortgage, a copy of your lease, a copy of a gas bill, something like that. Uh, we do need um, to see the birth certificate with a raised seal. We take a copy, but we need to see the raised seal. Um, again, Laura had mentioned immunizations and a current physical. That needs to be brought in in person uh, to the office. We take a copy of it. So don't worry if you only have one copy. We'll copy everything for you. Um, the pre-registration form, which I think you do on InfoSnap, but it may be a form that you have to download and bring in. And any kind of custody papers, any papers that you may have from a divorce that tells us of custody arrangements. Uh, likewise, um, if certain family members are not allowed to pick up your child from school, that's very important information for us to have. It is highly confidential information. And um, we, do, we do file it in the office uh, for reference. All right, looks like we're at the end. So I'm gonna exit um, out of the presentation, stop sharing my screen. And I can see that we have two questions in the Q&A. So I will click on those. And um, ladies, can you see that? If, I guess I'll read it. Can you see it too? Barbara, yeah. Um, Barbara, this looks like it might be a question for you. Um, what is the earliest a kindergartner can be dropped off in the morning? Um, 8.15, right? Yep. 8.15. If there's some special circumstances that you need some help with or something's going on, just give us a holler and we'll make sure that, you know, I, I can be down there or, um, you know, we have somebody around if there's some special circumstances. We, we, we make arrangements, but we can't have... And kids sitting in the lobby at you know, at eight o'clock. Eight fifteen is about the earliest. And the next question is from Nicole Gallant, and she says, "Hello, hi, Nicole. Uh, can kindergartners ride on the bus with their older siblings, and can the older siblings sit with them?" That's your question too, Barbara. Well, this is the deal. Um, Sometimes the older siblings do not want to sit with the younger siblings <laughs> and can cause more problems than not. Um, but I think to start off with, I, you have a very sweet old, older sibling and she may want to help her younger sibling. And the bus driver will accommodate that at least to start. So sometimes they want to be independent and sometimes they don't. So the bus driver is good about kind of feeling that situation out. So, Am I right, guys? Yeah. 
And another person has asked, when will we find out if there will need to be a lottery for full-time kindergarten? Right now, I wouldn't worry about it. I was just speaking to uh, the director of elementary curriculum today about this. And um, so far with registration, it looks like we have um, enough children registering for two full-time kindergartens with the numbers we have right now. Um, but please don't worry about a lottery. I think that we are gonna just be fine and that people will get their wish if they want a full-time experience for their children. Um, and then Dave Martelli asks, you mentioned technology in the slides for what the kids will be exposed to. Could you elaborate? I'm not sure who that, who that goes to. Deb maybe, or it's Sue? Um. Well, um, there's a, I know that there's a technology curriculum. Um, what they've been doing this year is they, they can log on and Sue and Sue help me out if you want. They can log on to um, their Chromebooks in the classroom and at home and they can go through Clever, which is a safe site that only has school approved websites. We don't list names or sell class lists or anything. Um, they practice like maneuvering, they practice logging in, logging out, finding some of those sites, there's free draw. Um, it's amazing how quickly they learn. Sometimes they're like, you forgot to hit volume or mute in tonight's case. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're always quick to help you out. But um, is there anything else? Can you think of, sometimes we, you know, depending on what our um, unit is for the week or the month. Um, we like to collaborate and integrate what we're teaching in the classroom with the specialists. So um, like they might draw a picture of their family on free draw when we do self and others at the beginning of the year. Um, some assessments are done on the computer. So you know, true. Some, some assessments yeah. Are done. yeah, that's yeah. very true. And I mean, this year, um, this year more than other right. years. Right. Mm -hmm. This year, absolutely. Since March 13th on, there were more, um, you know, Google Classroom. They really learned it. It was kind of amazing the kindergarten up there. Actually, and one of the, you know, it's been such a really different year. We've all learned, we've learned a lot about ourselves and we've learned a lot about how to teach differently remotely. Um, one of the silver linings, if I guess if we could look for one in a pandemic, is that our children now have one-on-one -on -one technology in the form of Chromebooks. And um, I can tell you that next year, the children entering kindergarten will have a one-on-one -on -one touchscreen Chromebook. And that will be used at school during technology, or as Mrs. Murphy mentioned, if we need a remote day. So even if we are keeping fingers crossed back five days a week in, a fairly traditional model of education, um, we will have snow days. Um, and, you know, we used to have blizzard bags for snow days. Now we'll just have remote days. So the children would bring their technology home on that day and they would zoom into class and learn even though it was snowing outside. So that's another, another way to use the technology. I'm going, there's another question about a lottery. I hope um, we already answered that. There's another question about, I believe it says, will there be an evaluation day for AM kindergarten? Um, all the children that come to kindergarten participate in the screening. So if you've, rec if you've chosen AM and PM, we still invite you to come to the screening, um, even though you're saying, I want AM kindergarten. We just love to meet your children to learn a little bit about them and it gives them the opportunity to come into the school and see a kindergarten classroom. And um, it also gives us the, the opportunity to meet you. Um, there is another question here from Jennifer Hiort. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Forgive me if I'm not. Um, do you have a back to school picnic or event for the kids to see the school before the first day, aside from the screening in May? Sue, do you want to answer that one? Um, sure. Yes, we usually have an open house night when the kids get to come in, meet their teachers, walk around the classroom, find their desk, find some things around the classroom. 
Um, it's usually the week of school opening, um, usually late afternoon, and they'll just come in, um, the whole class will come in and just get to get familiar um, and just meet the, meet the teacher, basically. If we're still under COVID restrictions, it might look a little bit differently than it has in the past. We might have, you know, classes coming in one at a time or, or something like that. But I think we all really, really hope we can offer an event um, for kids to get into the, the building before we open our doors. Um, there's another question here from Dave. Um, Dave, you're asking about tuition. Yes, there currently is tuition for full day kindergarten. Um, I believe it's, do you remember, Sue? Maybe it's like 2,500 for the year, maybe something like that. I should have looked that up. I think it's the same as it has been, but it's been different this year because of COVID. Yeah. So. I think it was four fifty a month. Four fifty a month. So that is the tuition for full day K. Um, and Caitlin, you're asking. Oh, this is a great question for the teachers. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a curriculum different this year because of was there curriculum different this year because of COVID compared to prior years? I, I would say it's the, it was the same. We have integrated all of our lessons and we have all our units pre-planned. The delivery was sometimes different and um, having to be animated so you can keep five-year-olds entertained and engaged was um, humbling and very valuable um, <laughs> lessons for all of us. But um, they just continued to amaze us like, with their ability to go through all this and persevere. So, but to answer the question, the curriculum was the same. Mm -hmm. Only difference being we didn't, we didn't do homework this year, Deb. True, oh, that's true. We didn't do homework. And the only reason we have done homework in the past is we like parents to see what we're doing, knowing what's going on. So sending home worksheets that they've done already in school is a good way for parents to know, um, oh, this is what they're doing. This year, because we have been on Zoom so much in Google Classroom and you guys can really see what's going on, we felt not a need to do that. Correct. And the last question I have here is which math curriculum do you follow? Um, I'll start here, but then why don't you ladies hop in on this question? Um, what I would say to you is that our district has a competency-based curriculum um, that is based on the New Hampshire state standards um, that we have done a lot, a lot of work with the math curriculum to really narrow it into tri-positions as competencies are year long and can take a long time to acquire um, mastery of them. But we've broken that down into smaller sub skills and um, manageable pieces of learning for the students and for the teachers to teach. Um, Sue, do you wanna, you wanna talk a little bit about some of maybe OGAP and? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um... Sorry, Sue, did you want to go? Oh, yeah, no, no, go ahead, oh, no. go ahead. Okay. Sue, Sue, Deb, Deb. <laughs> so um, this year for math, um, like any other, like the past years, we basically break down our standards and break them out over the trimesters mm -hmm. so that we're touching on measurement throughout all trimesters instead of focusing and waiting for one unit to do that. We try to do it throughout the um all three trimesters. Although you gotta remember some things are hard in kindergarten, they need to know this before you can move on to this. So, you know, the first trimester, obviously we focus mostly on the numbers one through 10 and um, being able to decompose those numbers and being able to, you know, recognize them. Can we do counting backwards, forwards, you know? So, although we're, we're taking the standards and we're just spreading them so that it, it fits throughout the year because they are year end standards. Well, and I think with, um, you know, some of the um, training, the OGAP training that Patrice 
you were talking about, um, you know, the importance of having um, a child know what a number is, have, gaining that number sense, and, you know, as uh, Sue had just mentioned, that at the beginning of the year, really focusing in on what a number two is, what does that mean? And with o the OGAP um, training that um, a lot of the teachers have had, it really does um, emphasize the importance of um, number sense and right. math recognition and, um, you know, and as, you know, Sue said, spreading those standards out, they get those standards again and again and again and throughout the year. And, um, you know, and I think, you know, especially in kindergarten, the beginning of the year, we really emphasize, you know, recognizing, you know, one through 10 and what does that mean? Deb, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I was just gonna say, we revisit each mm -hmm. of the strands and we just scaffold. Right. So we start right. with just, these are shapes, these right. shapes have names, these are 2D shapes. Later right. on, we talk about 3D shapes and how you can take different shapes and build other shapes. So it just scaffolds, but they, right. they get everything that first trimester and we continue to build. And I do think one of the importance in the math is not just you know knowing how to do it, but being able to explain. That's what we right. focus on, being able to explain what you're doing. And I think that's really important. Yes. Right. We have a couple more questions. One from Caitlin that says, do the full day kindergarten students use the playground or have a recess? Yes, they yes. do. <laughs> they all do. That's their favorite part of the day. <laughs> Um, that's the one thing that they want to do all full day, go out each day, unless it goes under, I think it's 23 degrees. They even go out if it's light snow, they'll go outside. They bring their snow stuff. So they do get into their um, snow pants, snow jackets in the winter. So they do go out every day. Yeah. We believe in the outside. Usually it's right before or after lunch. Typically it's been, well, before or after. This year it's right after lunch. And another question is, do we get contacted for the screening or is there a certain date they are held? Um, we don't have the date yet. It will be in May, um, but you will be contacted by one of um, our administrative assistants, Sandy or Janice. They will contact you and they will give you an appointment. Um, we usually have... Um, what, I don't know, we might have a couple of days of screening. So if, if it absolutely doesn't work for you, um, make sure you let them know that you need to reschedule that appointment. Um, and we can be very flexible about that. Right, I don't see any hands raised, but I wasn't seeing that. Um, I don't see any. Okay. I'm in, the, I'm in the questions and there are no more open questions. So does anyone have another question for us? Not well, clear. if you, I, um, oh, here's a more question. Oh, thank you. It says, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Before you go though, I am going to um, put in I guess the Q and A is the place. I don't you. Where do I do this, Dean? I don't see a chat. Yeah, I, I do not believe we have a conventional chat enabled for this um, presentation. However, we do have the obviously the Q and A that we have been utilizing. But if anyone has any questions that they want to speak in person, they can raise their hand and we can put them on. But we well, do not have a text and chat. And I was just looking for a way to put the link of the PTA meeting tomorrow in. But what I will do is how about if you want to attend the PTA meeting tomorrow, that you can email me. Um, I'm patrice.liff at timberlane.net and I will email you back the link. 
Um, and that way, if you would like to join the PTA meeting tomorrow, we would be very happy to see you there. All right, we have one more question from Mallory. Oh, we're so glad it was informative. We were, thank you, Mallory. She asked, thank you so much for this meeting. It was very informative, really appreciated it. Um, you know, it's the first time we've ever had to do it in Zoom. We usually get to meet everybody at the school and um, we, we appreciate that you came out tonight. And um, even though we can't see your faces, we looking, we're looking forward to meeting you in May when you bring your children for screening. Patrice, you could type um, that information in here as an answer. Oh, I could. Okay, that might, that might I am so sorry, everybody, because it went away. But let me get it back really, really quickly. Um, and I will type it right in there. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Not going. Uh, here it is. They did not give me, this is how the PTA does this. They, they just give you a meeting ID to Zoom and a passcode. So that is what I'm going to type here. Um, right there, I'll type it under Mallory's. That's the meeting ID and the passcode. Um, did that go out or did I do something wrong? No, that, that came up. Okay. So can everybody see that now? Could Can the participants see that? Uh, yes, uh, I'm actually gonna put that on full screen for you in one moment, if that would okay, help. Okay, thanks Dean, I appreciate that. There you go. So you can take a picture of that with your phone or jot it down really quickly. Good idea. And again, if you um, really, if you join the meeting and you lose this, just shoot me an email tomorrow evening. I will be on the call um, and I will send this right over to you. The other Mrs. Gallant is saying that it's also on the Atkinson parent page of Facebook. It's oh, that's there. great. So if you follow that, um, if you don't follow it, it's a good page to follow. So you can- And then um, what time is the PTA meeting? 7.30, 7 I, I apologize. It's 7.30 tomorrow night. All right. Thank you, everybody. We, we appreciated your coming. We hope you have a nice evening. Bye-bye.